In this training video we're going to go over the basics of creating a custom HTML form for FL message. Okay, one of the most important things that you need to know is w1hkg.com is the place to go. So let's click on the download page. I'm going to look on FL message. I've already downloaded and installed the software, but I want to look at the help. Okay, I'm going to come over to the right, click on custom forms, and then custom HTML forms. And here's the most important bit of information right here. In this basic intro, I'm going to show you how to create a, or how it would work when creating a new HTML form. I know that most of you might not understand the basics of doing this, but I'm going to use my Sublime 2 text editor to paste in the basic skeleton of an HTML form. So we've got the HTML tag, you've got the head tag, you've got the title, which is the title of the page, and then you get the closing of the head, and then you've got the body, and then you get the end of the body, and then you get the closing of the HTML. So in the title I'm going to call this uh, test FL MSG form 1. And I'm going to save it. So that's basically a HTML file. It's got no content in it. I've given it a name for the f for the uh, form, and that's the name in the browser. Nothing other than the name that's going to show up in the browser. It's not going to show up on the page. Okay, there's the basics of an HTML page, and in the body, I can put whatever I want. So I'm going to go back to F. I'm going to go to FL Message. I'm going to go to Form. I'm going to go to Custom, and you'll notice that hey, there's nothing showing up. Why? Because this technically isn't saved yet and it's not being recognized by FL message and I'm going to exit FL message and I'll start it again. A little bit of a buggy operation there where it's not recognizing the form. Oh, but you look, I'm back in there and it's still not recognized. Why? Well, it's not really in the form that FL message needs. It needs more information than that. If we go back here, we'll see um, it must include these statements in the header, or in other words, between the head and the close head tag. So if I copy this, control C, and I go back to my text editor, and I'm still in the head between the head tags. I'm going to go underneath the title, I'm going to paste it, and now I'm going to see that the menu item, I want to change that. I'm going to call that um, test form 1. And now if I save it. Now that should be enough for FL message to recognize it as an actual form. And it doesn't see it yet. Sometimes it takes a minute. Sometimes you need to restart. Shouldn't need to restart but in this case I'm going to. And I'm going to go back to form, custom, and now you can see test form 1 is there. If I click on test form 1, huh, invalid HTML form document. Why? Well, I've got the basic header information, but I don't have any form data. And let's see what I mean by form data. Inside the message, you actually have to have a form, and that's by the form tags. And then you have to have your text and then your input. So I'm going to go back to this, and now I'm in the body. So I'm in the body of the HTML document. And I'm going to tab over, and I'm going to type in form and tab. And that's going to give me, and by the way, that's sub in Sublime only. So depending on the text editor that you have, it, you might have to manually type those out. So I'm in the form now. So I'm in the form, and I'm going to put some information in there. I'm going to put in, I'll put in... Uh, first name. So that's the text that's going to display. It's first name. and But I want an input. So let's go back to that and take a look at how the input set up. Well, this isn't really quite the way it needs to be. Well, it is actually. I'm going to copy everything in the input and paste it into my text editor. So, input name is name, so we'll call this, I'm going to call this first underscore name. And do I want a default value? No. 
It could be 20 characters wide, yes. Max length, eh, we can give it 40 or we doesn't have to be a max length. But here's the important thing, if we want to tell it that it's type text. So now I'm going to save this. I'm going to go back to FL message. I'm going to go back and load the form back in. And now you can see it recognizes it's a custom form. It knows the name of the custom form. That's important when sending it to someone else and it recognizes a field called first name and there's a comma and there's no data in it. So if I click edit form, we'll notice it opened up my browser and it asked for the first name. I'm going to put in my first name and I'm going to hit submit form. By the way, there's no space between that colon and the input field which makes it hard to even see that there's a colon there. But let's go back to FL message and now my name's in there. I'm going to actually go back to my editor. I'm going to put a space between that and hit save. Just because it doesn't look too pretty. And I like things to look a little bit better than that. And now I'm going to need to go to custom, reload it again. I'll edit it. There, now there's a space. And I'm going to click submit form. Now the submit button's gone. This is in read only. I can't edit it anymore and the data is actually an FL message. Pretty simple. Oh, by the way, there's a reason why I chose Chromium, which is the free version of Chrome without all the extra Google stuff, Google code behind the scenes in it. It's because Chrome is one of the only browsers that uh, handles most HTML5 information the correct way. And what I mean by that is that the, t the date input field and other input fields don't work correctly in Firefox or other browsers. So I'm, I'm going to end by, I'll, I'll put a date down here. So date, space, and now I'm going to do that input thing, right? I N P U T. it. Let's see if I can do this. Input. And we'll do name equals, we'll go uh, incident date. And I um, don't want a value in there, so I don't even have to put that. And then I'm going to put type equals date. All right, so it all looks pretty good, right? I'm going to save it. I'm going to go back to FL message. I'm going to go to reload my form. Huh. Why didn't that work? Notice I didn't, I left an, actu an extra space there. I'll save it again. I'll go to form. Reload it. Hmm. So spacing and, and everything really makes a big difference. So now if I click edit form, it's going to open it in my browser. Notice not only do I have a space for my name here, I've got the date, and in Chrome, it's an actual date picker that you can choose the date. And then click Submit Form. And why is that Submit Form button right there? It's because I didn't really tell it I wanted it to, be, to move it anywhere, so I guess at the end of my, before the end of my form, I'm going to do a P tag, or yeah, we'll do P for paragraph. Okay, if I can get the tag, the tags right, that should kind of knock everything down to the next paragraph. So the next time I load that and click on Edit Form, the submit button get moved down the next, but an extra paragraph. And I'm going to change my name today to Fred. And I'll choose the date of the 14th, and I'll submit. I'll go back over to FL Message, and you'll see that my name is now Fred. And I changed the date to 914. Pretty simple, basic stuff um, for FL Message custom forms. Again, you have to have these meta, meta names at the very beginning in the header f in the, at the header. And the form has to be there 
for FL message to realize that there's an actual form and then you actually have to have input fields and of the correct type and you can limit it by size or you can put the size in with the max length on the text you can have a text area there's different types of text that different types of inputs that you can use I'm not going to go over them in this particular video but that's the basics of it that's how you create a custom form and the important thing of that custom form is it has to be in your NBMS custom directory so as you can see there's my NBMS custom directory and there's the a.html which if I actually open that with say Firefox you'll see what it renders like on the screen of Firefox and there's my first name and there's my date notice I, it doesn't have the submit button that's because I didn't put it through FL message I just opened it up as an actual HTML form and by the way you can also use a program like Composer or Blue Griffin or any other HTML graphical editors if you would like to edit these uh, and create your own forms notice that I don't have any lines or tables or any type of information there that'll all uh, come as you used to editing the uh, HTML forms also you can edit other forms that people create and turn them into HTML FL message forms if you'd like I've got an example of that on uh, the, on the uh, FL message or FL Digi NBMS uh, Yahoo group that you can check out it's for the VY Vermont Yankee uh, drill and it's a pretty complex form all right, that's it for the basic intro to FL Message custom HTML forms. Look for more information to come.